North and South Korea have both tested ballistic missiles within hours of each other on Wednesday. South Korea announced it had carried out its first submarine-launched ballistic missile test. Just hours earlier, North Korea had launched two of its own ballistic missiles that landed in waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. It was the second missile test by the North in five days and a violation of UN resolutions. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga had this to say about the launch. It threatens the peace and security of our country and the region and is outrageous. We will hold an emergency National Security Committee meeting later today. We will work closely with the United States, South Korea and other related countries and will firmly protect people's lives and peaceful livelihoods. That is all from me. The missile launches on Wednesday came as Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi was in South Korea meeting President Moon Jae-in. Prior to their meeting, Moon had in fact witnessed the test of the submarine-launched missile carried out by his country. Both China and South Korea are party to the so-called six-party talks format to bring about denuclearization and peace on the Korean Peninsula, a commitment that was repeated at the Wang Yi Moon Jae-in meeting. Of course, we all want to contribute to the peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. For example, not only North Korea, but also other countries are conducting military actions. So we should have all the parties make joint efforts to resume dialogues. We will make efforts to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula and establish peace. We hope for China's unwavering support and hope that Minister Wang Yi will continue to play a big role in supporting our government's efforts to develop South Korea-China relations and denuclearize and establish peace on the Korean Peninsula. Joining me now from Seoul is Jongmin Kim. She's a correspondent with nknews.org, a website focusing exclusively on stories from North Korea. Jongmin, I'd like to talk about South Korea's missile launch first. A submarine-launched missile is a significant military capability for any country to have. What are South Korea's motivations here? I think I can refer to what South Korean President Moon Jae-in said earlier this year. He said, uh, power leads to peace. And I think it's his, one of the main motives when he thinks of military capabilities in South Korea, which the country has been boosting a lot this year. And SLBM is uh, the latest news of it. The intention here would be, like the president put it himself just now, um, he says it would work as a great deterrence capability against North Korea. Um, we know that North Korea also developed submarine launched ballistic missiles. And although South Korea does not have nuclear warheads, um, it seems that they are using it for, like President Moon said, uh, deterrence uh, capacities for South Korea. And the South Korean uh, missile launch, of course, came just hours after North Korea itself fired two ballistic missiles. Are we seeing a new arms race on the Korean Peninsula? Oh, definitely. We are seeing something like a competition going on between the two countries on which uh, high-tech weapons they are developing and showing off on state media and in South Korea's case through press releases and videos and photographs. Um, it seems uh, that the missile test today on South Korea's end was already planned, but it was definitely an interesting coincidence that it just came hours after North Korea tested their short-range ballistic missiles. Um, and also, just a few days ago, there was a long-range cruise missile test by uh, by North Korean military. And today, South Korea also released information about how they tested cruise missiles as well. Now, where does that leave talk of peace and denuclearization on the peninsula? And it's something that Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and South Korean President Moon Jae-in also spoke of in their meeting earlier today. It was interesting uh, thinking from that perspective as well, because uh, the South Korean President Moon Jae-in and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi talked about how um, they wanted the 2022 Beijing Olympics to be something like a platform for the inter-Korean 
cooperation and dialogue will be bloomed again, although North Korea is technically banned from the Olympics by the IOC now. Um, from North Korea's point of view, it seems that they're saying they don't really need these symbolic uh, peace-sounding uh, projects or initiatives or humanitarian assistance like the U.S. President, uh, U.S. representative to North Korea, Sung Kim, has put yesterday. But they, it seems that with these ballistic missile tests and other types of weapons, testing North Korea seems to be reiterating that what they really want are the serious stuff, like the security guarantee that they want from other countries. What kind of a security guarantee exactly does North Korea want? Uh, to put it simply, uh, if they want to, they have been push pushing for this idea that if other countries, especially the United States, want, the, want North Korea to denuclearize or get into denuclearization talks, uh, these countries with good capacity to uh, tackle, North Korean, um, tackle North Korea will have to uh, somehow uh, persuade North Korea that other countries won't be targeting uh, North Korea with their military assets. And in terms of these guarantees, is it looking at put a potential permanent stop to joint uh, U.S.-South Korea military exercises? Would that be a first step that North Korea is looking for? Um, I think so. It, it would be part of it, and it would be a big step from North Korea's point of view. It's not only about security guarantee, but it also stands for something symbolic, like the U.S. Uh, forces in South Korea uh, not making quote-unquote hostile moves or hostile policies uh, targeting North Korea and doing more practices near North Korea. Uh, and North Korean high-level North Korean officials, including North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's sister Kim Yo-jong, has made it pretty clear in recent statements that they really want these drills to stop. But from the Allies' point of view, um, these are drills a business as usual, and they need this to uh, guarantee their uh, readiness posture. Now, North Korea is also facing food shortages and a worsening economic situation, primarily due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The question, therefore, would be why focus so much on missile testing and security guarantees when North Korean citizens are suffering? To the North Korean leadership, it seems uh, that they they are trying to tone it down a little bit. Although they are doing these missile tests, they put they did not put that on the front page of Rodong Shimon with the latest one, and they put it on the second page, and Kim Jong Un wasn't there. So definitely, the focus right now is on domestic issues like solving the food crisis and everything. But uh, testing these missiles also does like a, a, the internal propaganda uh, function as well because they are stressing that the country is trying very hard to keep the country's people secure and safe from the outside hostile forces or the enemies. So um, all, they are uh, sort of going for both. But to me, it does seem like the, all, despite the recent missile tests, the focus is indeed the domestic issues like the economic problems. Jungmin Kim from nknews.org. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.